Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, this lesson is actually a highly requested video. I put out a poll asking you guys in advance of Monday's exam, what would you like to see more of when it comes to the English language paper one exam? And lots of you basically said, we want to see more of question four practice, okay? Remember, in language paper one, question number four relates to the student statement, okay? A student having read this said, blah, blah, blah. Do you agree, okay? Now, when it comes to this question, remember firstly that this question is worth 20 marks. So in terms of the timings for the exam, make sure you spend a minimum of 20 minutes on this question and try to aim to write at least three, if not four pill paragraphs relating to this question. Now, this question can be a little bit challenging because when it comes to what examiners are looking for, how can you know if you're hitting the key touch points of this exam? Remember that this question tests your AO4. AO4, Assessment Objective 4, simply means are you able to demonstrate an awareness that you need to evaluate the student statement? In other words, do you agree? Can you say why you agree? Do you disagree? Do you agree to an extent? To be honest, what I tend to advise students is for this question, because the student statement doesn't tend to contradict what is going on in the extract, simply agree. And then also, of course, when you're then evaluating, you then refer to how the author uses language and structural devices to convey the student statement, or in other words, to prove that the student statement is right. What does that mean in terms of what you can talk about? Number one, always make sure and make it very explicit that you agree. Maybe you could disagree if you want to, However, when you then say if you agree or you disagree, make sure you allude to language techniques and language devices. That means you need to talk about alliteration. You need to talk about things like sibilance, metaphor, similes, things like onomatopoeia, pathetic fallacy, also advanced language techniques such as semantic fields, juxtaposition, and so on. If you're not clear on language techniques, I would strongly advise you guys to watch my language and structure techniques summary, where I go over literally all the language devices you can look for in any text and all the structural techniques, okay? So of course you wanna talk about language, but also when you are showing to what extent you agree or disagree with the student statement, you need to make sure you refer to structure. Structure refers to sentence types, repetition, listing. Structure also refers to how does it start, how does it end. If it starts and ends in a similar way or with the character doing something similar, then that's a circular structure. Again, that's a really advanced structural technique. Another advanced structural technique is things like anaphora, okay? So when a subject is constantly repeated and referred back to. Other structural techniques could be, for instance, if the text starts in one way, focuses our attention, say, on one character, and then there's a change of focus, that is structure. Structure also counts as uh, things like zooming in on one particular area and then zooming out, okay? So, of course, when you're answering the student statement, you need to make sure your answer is a mix of both language and structure. So, with that being said, what I'm going to do is now show you guys an actual worked model response when it comes to the 2019 AQA exam paper. This is just an example. This is not just how to answer this paper. What I want to do is to demonstrate to you guys when you sit in the exam on Monday, when you look at any text, here are some of the things that you can pay attention to. And of course, this is how it would look like when you're actually writing out your response, okay? So, with that being said, Let's now dive into how to actually answer this question in the 2019 paper. Now remember, question number four is the fourth and final question that asks you to look at the insert and to select evidence from the second half of the source that backs or disagrees the student's statement, okay? So remember, this is gonna be the final question where you're asked to look at the insert, and of course, you're always presented with a student statement. So as you can see here, I've already pre-prepared this response. I'm not gonna read through the extract. What you can do is go onto AQA's website, download this and read. However, just to give you guys a top line summary, this source basically describes a couple who are on holiday in the mountains. It starts off very, very silent, and we find out that Zoe is really excited to be on this journey and on this adventure, and she's looking at this very silent landscape, and she's feeling alive. She feels almost like an eagle. However, as the passage progresses, and especially now as we get to the part that you're gonna be asked to focus on for question number four, she notices that this tranquility is disturbed 
by some shifting in the ground. She ignores it and then, so she ignores the small slab of snow that slips beneath her. Then this whisper grows into a rumble. She still ignores that. And then her husband, Jake, is the one that snaps her out of her uh, mind. And she, he basically tells her to try to escape this snow before they are caught up in this avalanche, okay? So just a quick summary of this extract is I'm not gonna read it. However, you can read it for yourself. The extract begins quite silent. Zoe is really, really excited to be on this, uh, this resort. As it develops, this silence is disturbed by slow movements in the ground. These slow movements turn from a rumble to a roaring. Zoe still doesn't pay attention. It's up to her husband who tells her to get to the side. But by this stage, it's too late and they both get consumed. And right at the end, this silence returns, but it's a really, really eerie silence, okay? So if we go back to question number four and how I tackled this, as I mentioned, you get the student statement and going to the student statement and just to recap, the student basically stated, in this part of the story where Zoe and Jake are caught in the avalanche, I can't believe Zoe is so slow to react to the warning signs because in the end, the situation sounds really dangerous. Now, if you have a read through this extract, we can definitely agree that Zoe is incredibly slow to react to all the warning signs. She gets lots of signs. And especially if we look at line 28 to the end, we're told that she gets a lot of indications that she's not in a safe place because firstly, the small slab of snow slips from underneath her. So the author uses sibilance, which is a language technique that I'm going to include in my answer to show that the ground is becoming unstable. Then this grows to a whisper. So onomatopoeia is used here, whisper, as well as rumble, indicating that this place is unstable and still Zoe is slow to react as somebody that's maybe an experienced skier, somebody that's probably been on these holidays before, she should have done something, right? So we can still agree with the student statement. Now, as the passage progresses in the second half, this rumble grows loud and instead of making her panic, it actually makes her smile. Now, I highlighted this simple sentence because this is a really, really interesting structural technique that you can mention and point out. And the author is using this to still show that Zoe is far too slow to react and this situation is getting dangerous but rather than jumping into action she's just there sitting okay and it's only when her own husband Jake shouts to her get to the side to the side that she realizes that this situation is really dangerous so of course I'm also going to talk about these two exclamatory sentences okay remember an exclamatory sentence is a sentence that ends with an exclamation mark showing um, someone's shouting and it takes Jake to highlight to Zoe that they are both in danger however by that stage it's too late and Zoe is uh, caught up in this avalanche. The simile, like a tsunami at sea, shows how violent and dangerous this avalanche is as it consumes both of them. And there's a silence at the end when this mass of snow completely covers her. But this silence, rather than being peaceful, is quite eerie, okay? So let's have a look at my model responses. And what I'm gonna show you guys is how you incorporate in at least three, if not four pill paragraphs, language and structure observation when you're showing whether you agree, you disagree, I would argue agree largely, and then mention how this supports the student statement. Remember when you're answering this question, by the way, you want to always refer back to the keywords in the question. You're not repeating yourself. You are simply showing the examiner that you understand the assignment, okay? And of course, when you're evaluating, you then talk about how the author uses language and structure to reinforce what the student statement is. So here's my first pill paragraph. When I say pill, what I mean is point, evidence, explanation, and link, okay? So here's my first pill paragraph where I dive straight into the statement. Here's my point. To begin with, it's clear that Zoe is far too slow to react to the warning signs. I reinforce the student statement. I'm showing that I am agreeing. In fact, the ground beneath her shifted, yet she was not attentive to what was a really dangerous situation. I've opened here, but basically saying that yes, I agree with the student statement, but I do so indirectly. You don't always have to say, I agree. You can say, it is clear. We can see this is also a way of indirectly basically saying, yep, I agree with the student statement. Here's the evidence. There was a small slab of snow that moved and the whisper around her became a rumble. So here I am referring, and of course making sure that I'm selecting the correct bits of information. I am referring to this sibilance here as well as this onomatopoeia in my evidence and I'm embedding it. The author uses sibilance. So now I'm, here I'm talking about language techniques in my explanation. 
So the author uses sibilance coupled with onomatopoeia. So I'm talking about two language techniques to convey the sudden change on the mountain as the warning signs began to mount. So here I'm showing that Zoe is slow to react. I'm building an argument and evaluating by stating, yes, I agree. Uh, the verb rumble, so now I'll zoom in on one particular word, this is still my explanation, is vivid in revealing to us as readers that the mountain was becoming dangerous, yet Zoe was too slow to notice this sign. So here in my explanation, as you can see, it's longer than the other bits of my pill paragraph because this is where I go into analysis and this is where I evaluate to what extent I agree. I'm basically saying, yep, I agree, and here's the language techniques that the author uses. Here's my link back to the question. Consequently, it's clear that Zoe was far too slow to react. She had plenty of warning signs. However, she refused to heed, which means to pay attention to, uh, to heed these fatal signs, okay? That's my first opening paragraph where I'm basically saying, yep, I agree with this student statement rather than saying no. And I've made it purely a language paragraph. Now here's my second pill paragraph. And what I'm gonna do in this second pill paragraph is I'm gonna move through the extract. Of course, I started with this bit in the extract. Now I'm gonna move through it and select other bits of evidence from elsewhere and show my examiner that I'm selecting a range of examples from the text. So here's my second pill paragraph. Furthermore, Zoe receives numerous clues that an avalanche is imminent. Nonetheless, she is still too slow to react and this puts her life as well as Jake's life in danger. I keep on referring back to the student statement to show the examiner that I completely understand what I'm supposed to be answering. Here's my evidence. We learned that the rumble became louder. Now I've selected evidence from the extract, yet it made her smile. So now this is taken from the second page of the extract, okay? So I'm moving and working my way through the insert. Here's my explanation. These simple sentences, now here I'm making a structural observation, are somewhat infuriating for us as readers. Given that Zoe is clearly experienced in skiing, she should have been more quick to react as the situation was getting more deadly. Here I've now added evaluation, basically saying I agree, but also I've explained why I agree with the student statement before I then finish off. Um, linking back to the question. As a result, Zoe is certainly too slow to react. Her smile is inappropriate as this rumble was a clear warning sign. This is my second pill paragraph. My first pill paragraph focused purely on language and how this reinforces the student statement. Now in my second pill paragraph, I'm using a structure point to reinforce and to say that I basically agree with the student statement. I'm evaluating. Third pill paragraph. Additionally, as the extract progresses, and now I'm working through the extract some more, it's clear that Jake is quicker to react. Arguably, Zoe may not, may not have been too slow as she was too caught up in the beauty of nature to notice the shift on the mountain and it was Jake who noticed these warning signs. So I included this paragraph to show you guys if you decided that you wanted to maybe weigh up and evaluate, maybe show why you might partially disagree with this statement, this is how you can uh, show a little bit of a counter argument. It's not a very strong counter argument, but it's kind of, I'm basically saying to an extent, I don't completely agree with the student statement. Okay. You don't have to do this, but if you wanted to, this is how you can do so. Here's the evidence. Jake orders her to get to the side. That's my evidence. Then here's my explanation. The writer uses this exclamatory sentence to convey that it was Zoe's husband who noticed the warning signs. Zoe was understandably too distracted by the beauty of nature, hence this made her slow to react and Jake is the one who noticed this dangerous situation. Clearly, Zoe was slow to react to this lethal situation. So here in my explanation, I've now talked about how Jake speaks and I've mentioned exclamatory sentences, which is structure. And I've basically said to an extent, maybe Zoe might not have been slow to react. This is perhaps my counter argument, but it's not absolutely essential for you to do that. I've just included that to show you if you wanted to balance your argument, you can include it in that way. Then I'll link it back to the question. So uh, I state, thus Zoe was certainly too slow to react, so I'm partially agreeing to the dangerous scenario that was unfolding. However, we may empathize with her as she was so struck by the beauty of nature. Nonetheless, this still made her ignore all the critical warning signs. That's my link back to the question. I'm basically saying, yep, I partially agree with the student statement, but also we can see why maybe it wasn't completely and entirely her mistake that they found themselves in this dangerous scenario. Now, here's my final peel paragraph before I move on in the exam. Finally, Zoe is still debatably too slow to react to all the warning signs. So now I'm going back to squarely agreeing with the student statement and saying, no, 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 I still think the student is right. 
When her husband warns her about the dangerous avalanche, she reacts too slowly, meaning she still gets swept up in the snow. Final point, here's my evidence. Zoe takes too long to accelerate from the avalanche. That is like a tsunami at sea. So this I've selected from right at the end of the extract. I've worked my way through the extract. Joyce, which is the surname of the author, right? So you can say the author, but also you can refer to them by their surname. Joyce employs this powerful simile to show how Zoe underestimated the danger she was in. Simile, language, technique. Um, evaluating by talking about how the writer is using the language technique, the simile, to illustrate the student statement is right. So uh, I'm going to go back. Um, so Joyce employs this powerful simile to show how Zoe underestimated the danger she was in. She was far too slow to understand the gravity, the importance of the situation and the adjective tsunami, so now I'm zooming in on one particular word and doing some word level analysis, emphasizes how lethal the situation was, okay? So I've mentioned, so this is purely language techniques. I've mentioned the simile, which is language, but then I've also zoomed in on one particular word, adjective, and then I've basically said, this is how it illustrates the student statement is right. Now here's my link back to the question. Consequently, Zoe is certainly far too slow to react to the warning signs. It's clear that she had plenty of signals that could have alerted her to the danger, yet she chose to ignore them. So that's really how you can answer and tackle question number four, which basically, to be honest, you should see it almost as a blend of the skills that you bring together in question two, which is where you're talking about language, the skills that you then bring together from question three, which is structure, you're blending them together, but then you're also talking about how in connection to this student statement, to what extent do you agree, to what extent do you disagree? You can purely agree because the student statement doesn't tend to contradict what goes on in the extract. However, if you did want to have one counter argument statement or rather one counter argument um, point, you can then maybe use this type of language, okay, where you say arguably, but then still make sure you refer to language and structure when disagreeing. So thanks so much for listening and I hope this helped.